morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another Saturday. I have a guest today that was recommended by one of the GMs, Anthony Pertusi in New York. And I have his uh, field technician here with me today. And I'll just give you the hook right at the beginning. I was told he is the future of Augusta. So I'm excited to welcome you today. If you'll tell me your name and where you're from and kind of the company that you work for currently, and then we'll go back to the beginning. All righty. So my name is Tim Glover. I'm from Long Island, New York, like you said. I work at the West Hampton location for Augusta. This is my second year back. And yeah, things have been going good. I'm looking to just keep moving forward with the company. Fantastic. So tell me a little bit about your, your family, your childhood. Yeah, so I've been on Long Island my entire life. Um, I've been in landscaping for pretty much most of my working life. I probably started when I was 14 or 15, not always with Augusta, but then I took a year or two off and then I saw an Indeed listing for Augusta, got on a call with Anthony, went in to check it out. And that's when I was introduced to the systems and you could say like the different culture of Augusta and mm -hmm. everything really good from there. It's my, I'm in college right now, so I'm only in for the summers, but this is my second summer back and things have been moving good. Okay. So when you were young and thinking about what you wanted to do for your future, did you have ideas or goals for your future or just, you know, flying by the seat of your pants, just taking it as it comes? I tend to be a take it as it comes kind of person, but I've always liked the outdoors. I've, the outdoors have always been a big part of my life. So I've always enjoyed working with my hands. I never really understood what it would take or what goes into running a landscaping company. So not necessarily landscaping, but after seeing how things run and the future it could have, that's definitely on the on my mind. How old are you? I turned 20 in May, so just turned 20. Okay, and what are you going to college for? So I'm going for my MBA in marketing, and it's a dual degree program. So I'll have my bachelor's in entrepreneurship and then my MBA with a concentration in marketing. Okay, and that'll take what, four years? Yeah, so I graduate this upcoming spring with my bachelor's and then the following spring with my master's. Fantastic. So you seem like you're pretty good with school. You're pretty visionary enough to do this and your parents support all that you're doing. Yeah, they're very supportive. You know, they always tell me, you know, don't ever be. I guess the words don't just stay in one place, you know, I always be looking to grow, always be looking to move forward. And like you talked about having a vision. So mm -hmm. my time now and slowly continually grow. And but yeah, very supportive of it. So. It's good. I'm very interested and was very fascinated to talk to you today, mainly because I've never had somebody on the show that was recommended by a GM and that GM runs a location for the owner. So as the field technician, do you ever have any communication with the owner themselves? So in our setup, Anthony is pretty much handling almost everything you know if, if i'm in the field and i have a question or a problem i'm shooting anthony a call i do see jason here and there around the shop you know him and anthony have their meetings and he's always very friendly like no problems at all he'll say hello but other than that i'm pretty much day to day i'm with anthony and i've never had a conversation about an issue or a client with jason you know so it's pretty much anthony every single day Good. So that's, that is very successful and that's very smart. And it shows that the, the location and the transition of it is running really well. So you saw the Augusta ad on Indeed. And why did you choose them to apply rather than another lawn care landscaping company? Because I'm sure there's hundreds there. Right, right. So I had worked for a previous landscaping company. Didn't really work out. Just not my cup of tea, I guess you could say. And then I had tried doing like a while ago, a couple of years ago, I tried doing my own landscaping thing, which just went not amazing because I had no vision, no plan, no systems. But I had seen Augusta because I'm looking for information. So I had known about Augusta from YouTube videos and I'd seen like the podcast that my Gandhi's does. 
so then I saw it on Indeed, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, I've heard of them. I'm, you know, everybody knows the yellow trucks and the dog. Mm-hmm. So I applied, got on the phone with Anthony, and just based on the way he talked to me, you know, it just seemed like a much more friendly, well put together professional environment. So that's what really drew me to that. And I went and everything's been good. There hasn't been any problems since. So it's good. So when you had your interview with him, did he kind of do a little bit of a sales pitch for the company or was he mostly focused on what can you do and what can you bring to our company? Did a very good mix of both. So obviously people can lie in an interview, you know, so he asked me, he's like, oh, are you aware of the company? And I said, yes, but I think just, and it was smart of him. He just made sure that I actually knew. So he gave me a yeah. short pitch because I, I could just be lying. Totally. And then he wanted to know what I was capable of. You know, I remember the first thing he asked me is, have you actually done this? How long have you done this? What are you capable of? What are your weak points? And at that point in time, he was really looking just for someone to mow, which mm-hmm. I was comfortable with. And yeah, so he was just happy with how things went. And yeah, he's been great to me. I think I applied on like a Friday and started on a Monday. So it was very quick. He was, wow. So it was great. Yeah. What month was that? You said two years ago. Yeah. So I started, I think it was May like to the end of May, maybe the very beginning of June last summer. And I just got thrown right in the heat of it. I was going to say, man, that is right in the middle of spring rush and it's crazy. Yeah. But it was a good time, you know, like we try to keep things positive, have a positive outlook on stuff. So it was fun, but a different type of fun. You know, I was just always busy. Yeah. So when you came on, it's a whole different world with Augusta. But you had been listening to Mike's content for a bit. So had you already heard about P4P and a little bit of how systems are run in an Augusta location? Yeah. So I knew what P4P was, but I always got confused when I would try to figure it out through the video. Yes. Yeah. Is I mean, it's funny to think now, once I understand, I thought at a point in time you got both your base pay and P4P. Nice. Oh, I'm going to be a millionaire off of one summer, you know. But now I understand. And yeah, so I knew about the systems. I knew about Copilot. He didn't have his own app fully running last summer, Mm -hmm. obviously. But now, because I used to put the roots in by myself. Mm -hmm. And I got the least efficient route you could possibly think of. Yeah. Everything being put in for you, it's pretty good. It's very efficient. My P4B has definitely gone up since the app has been installed. Yeah. So you came in right when Copilot was a baby, baby. Right. Like, just born baby. Right. And so you you probably didn't have hardly anything to function with on, on Copilot. Did he set you up for success by warning you, okay, this is brand new. It's not going to be great for a while. Anthony? Yeah. Yeah, he had just he didn't say anything about it not being great, but he had just kind of explained to me the importance of having your route be as efficient as possible, you know, mm-hmm. kind of relates to like a you. So he's like, if you're, you don't want to go out to come back to go out. To, so he's like, pick one close, work your way out and work your way back in, you know, just basic stuff. I mean, it wasn't that complicated if you don't mm-hmm. make it really complicated. Yeah. So when you first started, did you have to put all your own jobs together? Like, did they just put you north or put you with a group going one way, another group went another way, or how did he split it up at that time? Yeah, so it would be kind of like you said, Perez. So some people would have the Southampton route, is, but the way it would work is it would be on it would be on the app, but it would just be a random list, like not put in any order whatsoever. So then you would scroll through in the morning, like try to get there early. So like six forty five, you scroll through, try to plot your route based on that, and then it's up to you to figure out where you're going and what order you want to go, but. Yeah, it was it was by location, so you're either in Southampton or P- I mean, not everybody watching this might be familiar with Long Island, but you're based basically within one or two towns per day, just banging them out. And then on your app now, do you route your own jobs now? No, so it's completely set up for you. It's great. Um, I mean, I'm able to move around a house or two. If mm-hmm. I mean, the app is a robot, so. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it makes one or two mistakes, but other than that, like it's great. So like the other day, uh, yesterday, it had a Southampton house or I'm sorry, a West Hampton house in the beginning and midway through the day. So I just looking through, I was like, I might as well do both in the beginning. But other than that, 
it's completely plotted out for you. It, you're like a monkey in a truck. Like you don't have to do a whole lot of thinking. You just follow what the app tells you and it's great. Yeah. How do you feel about all team members on a team doing every single job in your guys's database um, periodically, as opposed to one guy always having the same route? I, I think it's beneficial to have people do it periodically because I mean, this was never said, but in my opinion, I think that if you know one customer doesn't complain, for example, some people might take advantage of that and decide to not do a thorough job. Yeah. Or you also might, you might get sick of it. Like it's good for morale to like, Oh, this is a new house. Oh, I've never seen this one and keep it going. Mm -hmm. Flip side. It also helps with customer um, relations, I guess you could say, because yesterday again, a guy wasn't happy with a little patch that was missed, but since I wasn't the guy to last cut his lawn, he wasn't mad at me and it just de-escalated the situation. Great. Right. Knew that it was me who messed up. Yeah. I'm going to get yelled at a little bit, but. Yeah. So I agree with you 100%, but it's not a popular opinion, but I feel like the system should be so good that you're running your route. And if you weren't there today, that I should be able to step in and do your whole route because our job notes should be good enough. And right, our standards right. should be the same for everybody. And our systems right. are the same in place. And to them, it's just this another amazing Augusta individual showing right. up to my property. Right. So I agree with you. Um, it definitely should be mixed up. Everybody should be able to do something blind, so to speak, and come in and follow systems. And it's not dependent on people. It's dependent on the systems. Right. So when you were hired by Anthony, how did he talk about personal growth? Did he say there's opportunity for that here? Did he try to like set you on a trajectory with the Audible account or in some way to help you grow? So I came into this. I wanted to act like I knew nothing. You know, I just wanted to be a sponge for knowledge but because that's what gets in the way with a lot of people in this field is they come in, they think they know everything, but that's just not like, that's just not true. That's not real life. And yeah, I'm aware of that. So I came in thinking, all right, let me just learn. Cause I think maybe I think I know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. Like my boss is going to tell me the right way to do stuff. Yeah. So he mentioned to me, there is room for growth. And I'd also known that from watching these videos about franchising and, becoming a GM and all that. But in his defense, there's a good amount of people who just wash out. So he hadn't seriously talked to me about it until he realized like, all right, I'm, I'm sticking around and yeah, I'm listening to what he's telling me. Mm -hmm. Once he got to that point, he started really talking to me about, you know, there's really room for growth here and I think you'd be good and stuff like that. So did he have an audible account for the team? In, I mean, I wasn't aware of any of that early on. I mean, maybe he didn't. Yeah, it's possible he didn't, but I just, I think it's just more of he doesn't say any of this kind of stuff to people who he thinks it's not worth the time to say. You know, and I agree with that because it's, I mean, we literally had someone wash out in a week the other, like, and that's nobody's fault but their own. You know, they just, so he just kind of reserves that information until he thinks it's actually worth telling someone, which I agree with also. But. Yeah. Yeah. So do you seek your personal growth from like people that are a little bit ahead of you on YouTube videos or podcasts? Yeah. So for my personal growth, mixing some of the stuff I'm learning at school, obviously, you don't want all that to go to waste. Um, yes. And then with talking to Anthony. Cause I prefer to talk to people in person cause I can ask them questions, you know, like mm -hmm. if I want to YouTube it, like Mike's videos, they're amazing, but I can't ask him a question, you know, or for clarification. So through Mike's podcast and videos, as well as talking to Anthony. And when I first joined, I was talking to the guys above me just about anything. Like, like mm -hmm. I said, sponge for knowledge, like, why do you cut like this? Why? Like, I want to know everything that I can know. Mm -hmm. And it's worked out in my favor, I think, to just, you know, be someone Anthony can count on now, which I'm glad that's the case. But. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like that you are humble and teachable, which is one of our seven core values. And so you don't put yourself out there as somebody who knows everything, but somebody that is, hey, what do you know that I don't know? How have the older members of the team 
taken to you being like that um, by the obvious fact that you're going to be are a leader? I would it. It's funny because I joke with so, so as a whole, amazing. All the guys are great. You know, if you're part of the culture, you're part of the culture. Yeah, I think there have been a couple of people who it didn't work out, but I think there's a little bit of the whole year 20. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, exactly. So but as a whole, everybody's great. You know, I, I kind of try to keep a a friendly relationship with everybody. I don't want any problems. And it's worked out like, you know, I, I've been on routes with everybody. There's never been a problem. I think everybody's fine, you know, and, but there's been a couple instances where it's like, I'm twice your age. What are you trying to tell me what to, do? you know? And that's yeah. what I mean. Like some people think they know, but yeah, they're lost, but. Yeah. The demographic of the people that usually work for Augusta Lawn Care Services are not typically really educated or dialed in in their personal lives. A lot of times it's because it's the most entry level job that they can get. How has it been for you trying to grow and things like that when there's other people like that probably on the team? Do they kind of just get weeded out because everybody is trying to get P for P and is on top of their game? Or have you found uh, that a lot of them really have stepped up by the influence of some of you others? So some of them, I mean, sad to say, but like if you're going to get weeded out, you're in just the wrong mindset and it's going to happen. Yeah. And Anthony's great about trying to give everybody a good chance. You know, he's ne- he doesn't have any like predispositions about people. Like he he just lets people have a true chance. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, it's just if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But for the most part, I mean, I talked to some of the guys and some of them have washed out, but just about the whole idea of like you might not understand P for P and why it's great, or you might not understand this, but I'm telling you, like there's real room to make money here, you know, just like trying to be the positive. Cause I mean, I'm fully aware that for some people, they might not be loving their job. Like Mm -hmm. they might not have the same vision. Like you talk about personal growth. Mm -hmm. but So I stay aware of that. And I try to just maybe change their mindset a little bit of, well, you can grow, you know, it's all up to you though. So I, everybody's been great though about, just having a better mindset and the group of guys we have now, they're great. Like everybody is trying to get P for P. Awesome. Who was back at the shop the early, I mean, nobody's rushing, but it's just, yeah. just good morale around the shop. Yeah. Do you guys have the yellow slip system in place? Yes. So, and I think one thing and it's smart, maybe it's unintentional, maybe it's just co-pilot, but I'll go back and fix a yellow slip. That wasn't my doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's the same thing as I mentioned before. Nobody's screaming at me then if they have, if they are, I'm just explaining to them, this wasn't even me. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, it works out great because most of the time people are like anything mm-hmm. older over the phone. And then we start talking face to face and everything de-escalates and it's fun. Yeah, that is so smart. Have you ever been on a route and then you hear from Anthony like two jobs before they're already calling in and saying this or that, and then you go right back and fix it? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm happy to say, I mean, unless Anthony's hiding this from me, I haven't gotten any major complaints, but there was one time I missed like a little patch of grass. So I go right back and I just knock it down like it. And I'm never mad about having to do that because I tell Anthony, he agrees. Somebody's paying a dollar. They expect to have it done right. You know, like they're paying for the service. So if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. I'm going to go back and fix it. No problem. Yeah. I always thought and with my team appreciated, I would appreciate this. And I know the guys did just let me go back right now. Like, don't make me a yellow slip and put it in the office. And then I get it later and have to go way back. I'm I'm glad that you picked it up. But man, I want to do it right now. And I found that it just blows the customer out of the water that right. they called and 20 minutes later, you're back just right. taking care of it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I understand that you have some big goals and dreams and what you have to share about yourself is going to help a lot of other guys that are looking to the future. So you are going to get this degree and you are going to have um, a lot of education to do a lot of things. Why would you consider lawn care or franchise for yourself? So not to sound like a nerd here. 
I never really considered it until I looked more into the growth aspect. You know, like, sure, pushing a mower is fun, but I just don't think that's sustainable for me. Mm -hmm. for some people it might be, and that's fine because everybody's got different personal growth, different goals. But I've considered it ever since I learned about franchising and how those systems work. So, I mean, I, I'm only 20 right now, so I do have time. So it's, yeah. if I were to buy into a franchisee location, I know that I can, after five years, credit that towards another location. Right. After five years, credit that towards another location. So it's like anything, it's like real estate, you know, like you start with one house, then two, then four. So that, I, you might not be making a million dollars profit from one location, but you can make a good amount of money if you have a couple. And since there are systems in place, it's, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's simple, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect way to put it. So some people listening do not know what the 3F program is. Can you explain it? So you're saying for franchising? Yeah. If you're an employee of Augusta and you work for them for two years, I'm sure Anthony's explained that to you for yourself. Yeah, he's... I might be mistaking this with someone else. So tell me if I'm wrong. He's yeah. lightly committed. So I'm pretty sure it's if you work for a certain amount of time. Is that where they'll give you a location? Or you are, you are um, it's available to you to become a franchisee yeah, with no exactly. money down. So if it's like 22,000 to grow for, for a growth model, that's the one you'd want to go for. And right. then you get your own established territory, totally legit. Like you are coming yeah. in raw to be a franchisee and you would be, the best candidate to be a franchisee because you've already learned all the systems. You would be so set up for success to go for it. So is that what you're wanting to do? Yeah. So if I were to go down that route, I'd want to get a location. And then, like I said, I know that after five years, you can credit that. I mean, if you're getting it without it, I mean, that's amazing. But oh, if yeah. you were to put it down, you can credit that location down payment basically towards another one. And then yeah. you would wait five years. If you wait 10 years, you get it back. Yes. But if you wait the five, you just put it towards another and another and another. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying I'm running it by any means, but I know we're up there for one of the one of the higher grossing locations. So I know the workload and I know what goes into it. I haven't been running it, but Anthony mm -hmm. definitely tells me like and he keeps it honest with me. Like I said, like he's like, it is hard work, simple, but like it's hard work. But I'm not I'm not afraid of the hard work and I know there's room for growth because mm -hmm. that's exactly what I said to Anthony. I was like, I'm going to be getting this degree. I'm going to have a lot of options, but I genuinely enjoy doing this. Mm -hmm. So what are the options for actually growing, you know, like I don't want to stay still for too long. And yeah, he said the sky's the limit, essentially, like definitely. Yeah. Your education is only going to propel you even further. And so with the 3F program, man, <laughs> right. it's fast success for you rather than starting at the bottom in another company. So when you talk to Anthony and he talks about the company that you currently work for, do they talk about the future and the vision of their company? Like, OK, we're, we're planning to open another location in two years. Let's say let's say it was Anthony and he was saying we're going to open another location. I'm going to move on. To start that location, I need somebody here to run this one. Is there any talk like that or are they pretty settled where they are? I think Anthony and Jason are good at not showing all their cards at once. You yes, know, I, think nice. like, I think that's like any smart business owner. Yeah. You don't want anybody like overthrowing you, you know? Yeah. But they, I've heard talk, nothing like he's telling me exact this or exact that, but they, they're, we're obviously in a growth phase. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we're talking about cutting back on some clients because we're getting to kind of the max for what we have right now. Mm -hmm. and I think there's mention of opening potentially another location. And he has talked about that, but I've explained to him, you know, I am going to finish school. So I, I'm not looking to hold up anybody else's plans either, you know? So like, if you got to move someone in, you got to move someone into a position. Mm -hmm. I completely understand that. But he has talked about like potentially opening up another one because there's only so much one location can do. Yes. Now, I mean, for fifty thousand dollars setup, you could open another location. You know, like it's like, so. 
Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the reason I ask that is because if a company is trying to promote their team members to go into the 3F program, they've got to understand that that person, that young person, especially young person, is not likely going to move away and open their territory somewhere else. It's likely going to be right adjacent to theirs. So do you have those kind of conversations with them, like just, you know, sh throwing things out there to discuss or not really? Here and there, nothing in terms of like, I mean, I'm aware of the whole territorial setup of Augusta, mm -hmm. which I also think is great. You know, like you're not going to be really stealing customers from one yeah. another. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to any of that, but we haven't talked about anything like moving or anything of that sort. Right. But he, we've just talked about the idea of like growing within the company, growing in the field, and mm -hmm. but nothing in terms of moving just yet. Yeah. So in Augusta Nation itself, how have you been involved in the community? Are you allowed to be on Facebook? Are you allowed to listen to masterminds? Are you on the Augusta dashboard? What are the parameters they've kind of given to you? Yeah, so I I was given access to like, I forget these, the master class, I guess you could call that's why. The masterminds, we yeah. call them three M's, mics, minutes, yeah. masterminds. Yeah, so I have that. I also, this might be the same, um, like the landscaping business course. Mm -hmm. I got that, but nothing with the Facebook yet. I mean, I'm not a big social media guy, but. You'll have to be if you're going to yeah, do I know. I, I'll adapt. I'll adapt. <laughs> but um, no, he, Anthony's been good about like actually showing me that growth is possible. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people over promise and under deliver. Mm -hmm. But so far, everything he said could happen or what happened has happened or will happen. So it's it's been good. You mentioned fifty dollars for a setup. Is that kind of the number you have in mind that you would need to stay uh, save to get set up and get started? Well, I had said like for a dump truck setup, it might be upwards of like fifty ish grand. Like yeah. for for a whole setup to really get going in a not in a solo operator. But if you were to be a solo operator for a little while, maybe like 25, because I've been watching the videos, mm -hmm. so like 25 ish grand plus whatever you're paying to be at a shop and whatever. I mean, obviously that's not pennies, but that is doable if you're really looking to get into this field. Yeah. So it might actually work better for somebody like you if the position is offered, like if Anthony went and started the next location and you got to run this one, you can almost pretend you're the owner and run the whole thing while you're saving your money. Right. Right. So it'd be right. still something, a leg up and um, right. getting you where you want to go faster than if you graduate and you feel stuck mowing grass. Right. Yeah. Cause the vision has to be there or you lose good people. That's just how right. it works. Right. Yeah. There's people like you and me that will never be happy where we are and we're always striving to be better. So if there's not positions created for us, we're bye bye. Right. Yeah. Anthony's been good to me. So everything has just been good. You know, like I'm happy because he was telling me, he was making a joke. He was like, oh, the downside of being a good worker is you. Yeah. Work. And I said, you know, it's not a downside, it's just a different side. Yeah. You, know, you just got to try to have a positive mindset. So, like, I, it's not that I'm not happy where I'm at. But I'm all right. Like I'm happy now. Yeah. Get happier. You know, like yeah. You're just you just hungry. Exactly. You got to be because now, especially for me, is the peak time to really build. You know, it's like anything. Like if I were to wait till I'm 30 and then yeah. start trying to do this, that's 10 years lost. And yes, 10 years is a long time in this field, like of growth that could have been. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you one of the people that um, are visionary and want to make money? Or are you one of the people that need to have the soft, feely, got to feel happy and passionate all the time about what I'm doing? I would say I'm somewhere in the middle of those two. Okay. Because on one hand, if you're not happy doing what you're doing, like, like, you're going to burn out. Mm -hmm. You don't want to burn out. But on the flip side, I know it sounds horrible, but like happiness isn't going to pay your bills. You 100%. know? Yeah. So it's somewhere in the middle of, I don't need to be making a million dollars, but I do need to be making enough to support like my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I do want to be doing something I enjoy. Like basically, the best way to put it is I would take a pay cut 
if it was something I enjoyed, if it was still realistic to support myself. Yeah, that that's a good perspective. Everybody looks at it different. Like I'm going to be a millionaire. That's my thing. And I'll do whatever it takes. And it doesn't matter if it sucks and I'm crying and I'm grinding. It's it's going to happen. I would say right now, more in the mindset of stacking away money and mm -hmm. growing, growing. So and hopefully I get it done sooner than not. And then I have time to worry about like enjoying it. You know? Mm -hmm. A lot of people start in this industry without much education, like we talked about earlier, and then they just move up learning the ropes and the business. But you're actually learning it legit, like stackable skills in college. Do you feel that that has been so far very beneficial? Because it's kind of like parallel. You're learning this stuff while you're doing it. Yeah. So currently I'm learning mostly entrepreneurial stuff. And one class that's really translated, I took a negotiation class. Nice. So I was just talking about building rapport. And there was a book called Never Split the Difference, which yep. was by like a hostage negotiator saying, you're yes. not going to just split the difference in the situation. So I think those skills have really translated to when I'm talking to a customer. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand. I mean, not to bash on my generation, but not a lot of people shake hands or keep eye contact mm -hmm. or are able to even talk like so like to people um so i think that kind of social skills have really translated to talking to customers especially when they're mad you know I'm, i think that class taught me a bit about being able to de-escalate a situation mm -hmm. so those have definitely been transferable and then i think in my grad school year that marketing stuff will also come into play with all right how are we going to grow 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 you know. Yeah, you'll you'll then love all the videos about the marketing. And do you watch any of Alex Harmozy stuff? I don't. Yeah, so he's the one that uh, Mike watches a lot. It's really in the weeds stuff, and I don't understand every bit of it either. But I make myself listen to every episode so that I can like I can get where we're coming from with Augusta and what we're building. It gives me an understanding of why we do what we do. So you'll probably enjoy that as you do more of the marketing and things in the future. But what is your, um, what's it looking like right now with how many recurring customers you have? What kind of services you guys offer? And um, how many people are on the team and trucks and a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have, I believe it's eight people in our crew. We've got four trucks and then a dump truck. We've got the estimator vehicle that Anthony will go out in. Service-wise, we do like everything. Like there's nothing we don't do. We will do anything for a customer that makes realistic sense financially and time-wise. Mm -hmm. um, but weeding, cleanups, mulch, pruning, you know, like the box, mm -hmm. uh, the hedges, we do mowing, obviously. Mm -hmm. We do fertilization, uh, dethatching. We've done aerating, we like seeding, fertil like anything. Literally anything that power washing we've done. I, I hosed down this guy's garage door the other day. Like anything that they need that we can do. We rake out, I mean, the Hamptons are the Hamptons. We rake out sand dunes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a crazy thing. Yeah. Do you do snow as well? I have never been around for that season, but I believe that they do do it, but mm -hmm. I'm not fully really sure on that because I've never been around besides the summers. But And then recurring customer wise, I don't know the exact number, but if I had to guess, I'm going to say 80-ish, 80-ish Moe's. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just me guessing that it might be higher, might be lower, but it's probably, it's probably I, probably, I probably cut. Oh yeah, definitely. Higher, Cause I, alone probably cut 40 ish lawns a week mm -hmm. and are most of them weekly or bi-weekly most of them are weekly we do have a handful of bi-weekly but most of them are weekly mm -hmm. yeah that's cool and then um for the future your five-year goal what are you looking at like when you lay in bed at night and you're you know thinking about all that's going on in the company and yourself where do you see yourself in five years? I mean, the an amazing answer would be my own location. And I would not do the absentee owner. I would want to just be the general manager as well for the mm -hmm. beginning, you know. Um, 
but I'm going to graduate school in two years. And then I'm not one of these people who thinks I like deserve anything, you mm -hmm. know, I'm going to put in my time where I have to. So whether that's another year of being a field technician or I'm doing two years as a GM, whatever I have to do, I understand there's like systems in place, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but hopefully owning my own location or a company or whatever it may be, but roughly five years, roughly five years, give or take. That's fantastic. So when you go out to, and work for the day, do you listen to anything? A lot of music, a lot of music. music yeah. And then are there any podcasts or anything like that that you typically listen to? When I'm with someone, it's music. But when I'm by myself, sometimes it'll be podcast. Sometimes it'll just be like a little motivational video. Like yeah. No, no substance, really. It's just kind of like, all right, you're tired, whatever. Yeah, get going. Exactly. Like, just get after it. But yeah, sometimes I'll listen to also like the like the day in the life videos. Sometimes mm -hmm. just like just to hear like realistically, what is this taking? Mostly of the solo operators. Just to see, like, what would that be like, you know? And yeah. I'm not, I know it's not all sunshine and rainbows all the time. Like, I'm fully aware of that. But just yeah. what exactly does it take? Yeah, exactly. Um, so what would you say to somebody in your place? They're, they're in the field. They have this big goal of being an owner someday. Can you walk them through the steps of kind of how to think through that and kind of monitor themselves, engage themselves? Because it's it's a long game. Yeah. So my first advice would be forget anything you think, you know, you know, like I think that that is the number one thing I think gets in the way of a lot of these guys who, come, who could probably be great owners, you know, mm -hmm. but they just don't have the right mindset. Mm -hmm. So I would say come in with your head down, just listen to what you're being told and just show up every day, ready to work. You know, like you're not going to be loving work every single day. Like if anybody tells you that they're lying to you. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's days where it's just like, come on. But it's those days that really count. You know, it's the days yeah. you want to show up and you still show up that make the difference. So I would say grind it out. I mean, you're going to start on a weed whacker. That's how I started an entire summer, like mm -hmm. 10 weeks. Oh, just my like, word. You know, so but that's just what it is. It's just the system. Yeah. So I do that. And then you got to you got to know if you actually love it. Mm -hmm. you, you love landscaping so that's why i think it's good to work in the field for a couple of years once you realize you love it or don't love it mm -hmm. you realize you love it then you could start talking about growth you know the the real path is you start as a field technician then you might move into something like an estimator as well where it's not a full gm role but mm -hmm. a little more and then as you learn a little bit of that you can move into shadowing a GM, then hop in a GM role. Then from there, you could become, I mean, I don't know if this exists, but I guess a regional manager would be kind of up there if that's a position. And then you could move to a location owner. And then whether you want to be an absentee owner, which is kind of, you're just going to worry about the numbers and the cash flow and all that. And you let your GM do the day to day, or you want to be, hands on and kind of cut the GM spot out and just do it all. That's mm -hmm. up. And then, as I mentioned, I mean, it's like you said, it's a long game, but five years down the road, you can credit your first payment to another location. I'm sure it's double the work, but it's double the income potential, maybe even more so on and so forth. You grow it as big as you want and see where you go with it. Mm -hmm. One thing I should have asked you earlier, do you guys, it sounds like from the amount of trucks you guys are doing two guys on every route, or do you do any solo routes? I do some solo routes. Yeah. Um, Cause not everybody's showing up every single day. Okay. You know, so if there's a day people can't come in or someone's part time, I'll go out by myself. Um, but yeah, no, it, I mean, it's funny cause I always used to think, being by yourself would be so much slower, but in a weird way, it's kind of not that much different. I don't, I don't understand why, but it just kind of works out that way. And you typically make more P for P. Have you noticed that? hundred percent. A hundred percent. I had never gotten my like, real taste of P for P yes. going out alone. And then I was like, all right, like it's not the end of the world to be alone. You know? Yeah. Yeah. After that started, people were like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a right, solo right, right. 
15 modes and don't take any off my route. I want them all. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that Anthony looks at you and considers you a leader? I don't know. I would, I would like to think he does, but I mean, I've been in leadership roles my entire life, but I'm also not going to step out of line. Like mm -hmm. I'm a field technician right now. I'm in no place to be telling people what to do or what not to do, but I'd say he does put new people with me for mm -hmm. me to properly teach them the systems. So I would like to think that he knows I can be a leader, but I'm just not in that role right now. Mm -hmm. So you're a trainer. Yeah. So I train people. I think he, I think he considers me able to do whatever he needs me to do, which mm -hmm. I like knowing that he can just have a little peace of mind with me. You know, like when I'm on my solo routes, he's just letting me rock. Like I'm not, mm -hmm. not bothering me. Not where are you? Cause oh, he, right. he can trust me, you know? And yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So then, okay, he does consider you a leader. When you are actually out on the route with those new people, do, do you just keep talking, like um, constantly trying to fill in the gaps and share and talk about the company and uh, do more than just training the actual tasks that you guys do? Do you do that while you drive? Kind of like preach the message of Augusta? Yeah, I'm a big talker, like a big talker. So trainer. I'll, I'll tell them. So I normally start off with like the basics, like they're only using the weed whacker. And I'll just say, look, you're going to want to pick, you know, pick a point, do the whole perimeter. You'll find yourself magically back at the same spot and then go hit around any trees. And that normally goes out the window of the first house, like mm -hmm. literally like I never said those words. So it's just, you know, the constant repetition of just you got to just ingrain it in their brain. Like, yeah, you know, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, like just over and over and over. But I also try to tell them, you know. Cause it's all about first impressions are big, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, I was fine, but like with who trained me, they were great. But for all I know, there could have been someone who was loving the company whose trainer was like, Oh, this job sucks. Mm -hmm. Like just completely ruins their impression of Augusta. Yes. So I try to just keep it positive, make sure they know like there is room for growth. I don't preach anything crazy either. Cause you know, you don't know who's going to last and who's not. Right. I always just say like, look, this job's great. Don't overcomplicate it for yourself. Don't, and I always tell every single person, I don't care if they're 50 or 18, mm -hmm. don't let your ego get in the way of your success, you know, because I think that's another big thing. Yeah, for sure. Do you get a trainer's bonus while you're training? Uh, Yeah. So I've been doing some unofficial training, like kind of like just watch them basically with yeah. the guys who we didn't know what they were about. But this past time I did get a trainer's bonus. Yeah. Do you think that that motivated you to like talk more, make them successful more, get them out on their own faster? It, I think, and this is one thing I think Anthony appreciates. I didn't even know I was getting the training bonus. You know, like if somebody asked me to do something, I'm going to do it, whether I'm getting a bonus or not, you know? Yeah. So I'm happy to say, I don't think the money made a big difference to me. Because mm -hmm. I was just looking to make sure I wanted just everybody to be happy with the end result of who I was training. Mm -hmm. you know, if the next day he's with someone else and they come back to me and they're like, what were you teaching him on the weed whacker? Like, this is terrible. Yeah. You know, like that's going to fall on me. Right. So them knowing they're good is more important to me than the bonus. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the way I always worked either. Always. And if, if you're good, you're going to get more money. It's just right. going to happen. Yeah, right. become so much more valuable to the company and they're willing to pay you whatever because they're just so happy to have you there. Right. Yeah. So if you were to give be given like a, a higher position, you would suddenly be in a role to have to lead people. Do you ever think about it? Uh, like if I was in that role, how would I start structuring things? How would I have to change myself to be a leader? What would be have to shift in your mind if you had to start leading teams? Yeah. So I've been in leadership roles my entire life. Like I'm an Eagle Scout. So mm -hmm. my whole life, like as long as I can remember, I've been leading people and people tend to naturally just gravitate towards what I'm saying. Cause it, I'm never coming at people. Mm -hmm. I'm not people who's going to talk down on you. Mm -hmm. but 
mind shift change that I would definitely need to have is forget about my age. Yeah. If I'm sitting in a room at a desk telling people twice my age what to do. Mm -hmm. If I'm consciously thinking like, oh, I'm so much younger than them. Mm -hmm. oh, it, I'm never going to get anywhere. Like it, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with age and everything to do with the role, I guess you could say. Not to say they're like below me or anything. I'm not saying anything like that, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether I'm 20 or 30 or 40. If I'm a GM, I'm a GM, you know? So I would just have to shift my mindset of forget about your age, dude. Like you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Do you think that's actually your competitive advantage is being younger? I would say so with customers also, because I think they're kind of surprised when they're like, oh, this kid looks like he's 12 years old. Like, oh, you know, yeah. they're like, well, what is he doing here? You know, like, and then we get to talking and they're like, oh, you're in college. Like, you know, just because like you said, a lot of the demographic is not in the same position I am and I'm mm -hmm. being the position I am. Mm -hmm. But I think that would be an advantage because also like Jason, the owner, he's a, I mean, we haven't fully talked about it yet, but he's aware like, oh, he's in a different position than most. You know, there's yeah. like, we can do more things here. So I would say it's an advantage, especially time wise. Also, like I mentioned before, I got a little more time. Yeah. Our goal is to change the professionalism in the landscape industry. When you look at the other companies around you guys and how you function every day, can you see that having that vision is really uh, having an impact or if we're really changing that? I would say we are. I just think it's unfortunate because for some people, like it's all about price. You know, like we offer a great service. So we're going to have certain prices that a mom and pop type landscaping business might be undercutting. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything about that, you know, but professionalism wise, I think we're blowing everybody out of the water because I see it here and there. And maybe people are starting to copy us. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'll see blank yellow shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. like we started. Oh, yes. We started that. yes. Um. But like the uniforms, everybody's the boots and the pants and the hats. And the, I mean, the trucks are like nothing anywhere else on the island that I've seen. Yeah, I bet. You know, like just it's a yellow truck with a dog. Like, And even if you don't understand what it is, it's kept, like I see people in traffic. They're looking at it like, what is that? Like, you know, totally. and that's amazing. Like, it's just drawing eye traffic to the truck. And mm -hmm. you, I mean people on my own are sometimes not the friendliest, but we wave to every single person driving by, like other people just aren't doing that, you know, mm -hmm. like, and like the manners we have, even, I mean, we're not really taught that. It's just, I try to teach people the importance of that. But like everything is please. Thank you. You're welcome. No, sir. Yes, sir. Like, mm -hmm. I think that goes a long way. Cause like I said, I think customers are kind of like, Oh, like I'm not used to that. Like, so yeah. Good. Yeah, I think that's really smart when you say about waving to people because every little kid turns their head and every little kid right. wants to see the dog and wants to talk to the dog. I don't know if you saw that post the other day, if you see any of the posts that Augusta puts out, but one was the one of the franchisees had his truck to the side of the road and he had his dog out the window and those little kids were talking to right. the dog and stuff. I mean, you can't beat that for right, right, right. and right. customer service and and so I think that's great because most of the time, even we noticed it here, if, if you see other landscapers, they don't even want to acknowledge you. And here's our Augusta guys always waving right. at them. They're like, you're stupid. But after a while, they have to kind of wave back. Right. Yeah, it's good. All yeah. right. Well, as we wrap up today, is there anything that you would want to share from your unique point of view as somebody in college coming up through business? Anything you want to share with people older than you, younger than you? people you work for, just what's on your mind? I would just say like, it's never too late to get in the game. You know, like you might not have as much time as me and I'm, you know, at some point in my life, I'm not going to have as much time as someone else, but mm -hmm. it's never too late to get into it. And I just think it's important to just keep a positive mindset. As I mentioned, like, I think that just gets in the way of a lot of people and, but it's never too late to get in the game. And there is room for like a career in it. You know, it's not, I think if people could stop looking at it as a, Oh, it's a last resort type field. That's smart. You know, like there's, there is plenty of room to grow if you have the right path in mind. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just work hard and you'll get out what you put in. And I think that's, 
just really what it comes down to. Yeah. So in other words, it's a job with an actual future that you could build wealth. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think especially with like how people are these days, there's going to be a lot of room for the services fields mm -hmm. years coming, you know, like a lot you, kids I go to school with, they're not mowing their own grass when they're older, you know, like it's, right. there's going to be plenty of room to make money for everybody, you know, Yeah. it's kind of like, I mean, my parents really, it's like a pizza shop, you know, there will be five next to each other and everybody's got business. Yeah. So there's all, like, don't think, Oh, there's already a thousand landscapers be the thousand and first, you know, like there's room for you to make money. Yeah, that's great. And I have to ask, do you have a favorite quote or book or anything you want to recommend? I'm a big quote person. Oh, yay. I think a good one is God will sell you anything at the price of labor. So, wow. you, know, you know, so that kind of applies to what I was talking about. Like, obviously things have different price tags. But yeah. if you want something, you'll get it if you put in enough labor, you know? It, mm -hmm. And then I'd say just another mindset I think I mentioned before is don't think you deserve anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that is just pretty important. And yeah. That's great. All right. Well, thank you for your time today. It is much appreciated. It will help a lot of people. And uh, I appreciate Anthony for recommending you and telling me that you are the future of Augusta. All right. Thank you. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye.